Ireland is home to what I think are the most spectacular golf settings on planet Earth. These massive dunes rise up over coastal cliffs. They surround fairways and they create majestic amphitheaters of green complexes. Tall grasses and deep pot bunkers are lurking everywhere, waiting to swallow you or at least your ball whole. Irish Lynx golf is a beast all its own. The approach isn't to come out here and try to exert your mastery over the golf course. It's to become one with the golf course. It's to enjoy the moments, to savor the poor shots alongside the great ones. It's to survive the test and come out stronger for it. That's how you start a world-class golf course with a double bogey. <laughs> it's an unnerving, impossible challenge and it's magnificent. Spectacular, spectacular. So I've been planning a golf trip to Ireland for many years and something keeps getting in the way. Pandemics, cancellations, injury, anything and everything you can think of. But this year, thanks to the team at my golf group travel, I was able to make my dream of spending a week long golf trip in Ireland a reality. They planned an unforgettable itinerary around the premier golf properties in the southwest coast of Ireland. Not just the golf itself, but also of the sights, the sounds, and the tastes of Ireland, which are seemingly in endless supply. In this video, along with the coming episodes, I'm gonna take you along for that journey. Through the little towns, the narrow roads, and the serene walks from green to tea box. The courses we'll discover together include Bally Bunyan, Ireland's number one ranked course, a remarkable study in pure Lynx golf. La Hinch, a quirky and iconic club sandwiched between a town and the Irish Sea. Arnold Palmer designed Tralee, a gem that hugs the coastline. Trump's spectacular dune bed complete with its opulent accommodations. And Killarney Golf and Fishing Club, a serene 36 hole respite tucked inside a national park. I'll show you a few of my triumphs, my very many struggles, and outnumbering them all, my pints of Guinness and my laughs along the way. Now guys, on this video, you're gonna see some amazing places, and if you'd like to experience them with me next year, I've got some details at the end of this video, and there's a link down there in the description, so check that out. Now, let's get right into it. Now, Shannon, Ireland is the perfect drop-off point for Irish golf, especially if you're looking to go on a Southwest itinerary. The flight to Shannon is an overnight flight and neither Patrick or I got a wink of sleep. I think we were just too excited. Pro tip, by the way, this is my carry-on baggage. Wouldn't let the, the baggage handlers touch those babies. Owen from My Golf Group Travel was there to pick us up and bring us to our first destination. First stop on the Southwest uh, tour to Ireland, Gabe, is the amazing Trump International Dune Bank. There we met another of our tour guides, Damien, who was there to show us a good time. Damien. What makes Irish golf special? The chance to get out on championship golf courses. Um, it's something you don't really get anywhere else in the world. You can come over here, you can play some of the best courses going and they're open to visitors all the time, which is fantastic. Now, Dunebeg was originally designed by Greg Norman and it's been subsequently tweaked by Dr. Martin Hawtrey since the Trump brand purchased it in 2014. I think it's a more modern take on Lynx golf, but in no way less spectacular. The rough here is brutally penalizing and that's if you can find your ball. So there's really a premium on finding fairways and greens at Dunebeg. Dunebeg has this stately <laughs> clubhouse. It's almost castle-like. It's probably the most American feeling clubhouse with its upscale and more modern take on traditional interiors. They have these spacious locker rooms, pro shops, and their dining facilities are just top notch. Dunebeg has probably the best starting hole of any I played in Ireland, it's dune-lined fairway, terminates in one of those amphitheater-like green complexes with a few key bunkers that you've got to avoid along the way. It was just the perfect beginning to our golf trip, but when you're standing on the first tee of a place like this and you're just inspired and awestruck, 
the nerves start to creep in. I just started tours with a little shot of uh, my famous whiskey, uh, Jameson. So uh, we all grab a glass here, that's. But the guys knew what they were doing. They brought out a <laughs> shot of Jameson to calm those first two well. jitters. And it worked. Pat and I actually hit two really good drives off the tee box, completely cold and we were off and running. Now, unfortunately, those good shots were actually few and far between here today. Some of that definitely owed to the lack of sleep from the night before, but I think it was also just the grandeur of the place itself. It's tough out here. The more I play Lynx golf, the more I realize you just gotta think about the next hole and the next shot and not really worry about your scores. The course itself is laid out in the traditional way that I love. Generally, if you look at any golf scorecard, you'll see on the yes. front nine, you are going out and on the back nine, you are coming in. Well, that harkens back to original golf course designs, which were a long walk out and then back in. And that is how Dunebeg is laid out. I love that. It's actually about a seven mile walk. And though I played mostly poorly, I tried to savor each and every step. There are some really unique holes at Dunebeg, including this drive over a massive dune, the Atlantic Ocean there on the left side. Stunning. Now I did save my best for last. The 18th is just a marvelous finishing hole where I actually had to hit my drive out over the ocean and curve it back with my draw onto the fairway. You've got the clubhouse framing the backdrop and that second shot after a good drive, a low iron is required with pinpoint precision. I stuck it pretty good there and I just missed the birdie putt. Now the accommodations at Dunebeg are second to none. There's a complimentary shell from the clubhouse out to where we stayed, our villa, which had these nice welcoming common spaces like a kitchen and living room. But then each of us had our own personal suite with a massive bathroom and a big giant comfortable king size bed. Let me tell you, that was the best shower and the best night's sleep I had in all of Ireland. Now our next stop was La Hinch. I think looking back on it, La Hinch was my favorite golf course on this trip. It's all at once quirky, spectacular, and homey. And it's a golf course that just could not possibly be built in today's modern age. In fact, it was designed way back when by a famous golf course architect, old Tom Morris, and his hallmarks are everywhere around the property. Between its switchback routing and its blind tee shots and second shots sometimes, it's a layout unlike any I've experienced back home. Now, what struck me when driving up is that this course is quite literally a part of the town. You turn off the main road and boom, the clubhouse smacks you in the face. There are times when you're literally standing on the road and there's other times when you feel like you're in the most remote place on earth. It's fascinatingly weird. It has goats too. There are so many special holes on this course. The first one for me being the fourth hole, which the locals affectionately refer to as the Klondike. It's an original old Tom Morris par five where the second shot is over a massive dune in the middle of the fairway. This is something you'd never see on a modern golf course. And there's actually an aiming stone which lets you know which direction to hit your shot. After a perfect drive and a little bit of a quirky lie, which you will get in Ireland all the time, I did this. But then I did this, and this, and then this. It's an easy game, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. The fifth hole is probably the one I was most looking forward to in all of Ireland when I was doing research for this trip. It's called the Dell, and similarly, there's this massive dune that shields the green from your view back at the tee box. And by the way, that tee box is literally next to a road in the town. Like I said, this place is full of quirks. Now on the day we played, the pin was actually cut on the extreme right side of the green, so we actually just get a little glance at the flag. I wanted to birdie this hole, hell, even have an ace, my first ace, so very badly. I think nerves got the best of me, as they quite often can, and I thin one, towards the right side of the green. But the golf gods came through. I got a ridiculously good kick off the dune and the ball started tracking towards the hole. Of course, that big dune in front of me stood in the way of seeing where the ball actually finished, but I hoped it was close. The cool thing about a hole like this is the anticipation. I have no idea what the ball did once it actually hit up the green. 
You're gonna only find out once you get around the hill. Walking up after I got past the massive dune and the green opens up before you, I saw my ball was sitting there eight feet. Brilliant read from Huey, as always, and I got my wish, a birdie on the Dell. Didn't matter how I played the rest of the round, this was gonna be a special one. I did play pretty good though, I must say, and I don't wanna spoil all the fun, but I did end strong here at La Hinch. I had about 40 feet for birdie, and I did this. Yes! Yeah! Oh, and of course, Patrick was his normal self. He shot a cool yes. 76. Classic. Now guys, there will be a full episode from La Hinch as well as all the golf courses that we played on this channel. So make sure that you're subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you can be one of the first to watch them and not miss an episode from Ireland. Now the other thing about Ireland doing a golf vacation is in addition to the outrageously good golf, the natural beauty and sights to see, pretty awesome. You got old castles and you got places like this. This is the Cliffs of Moher, just gorgeous. Pretty much point the camera anywhere and have a good shot. After La Hinch, we retired to a hotel in the town of Killarney, which I think is the perfect hub for all of the golf around the south and west coast of Ireland. We stayed at a cozy boutique hotel called the Victoria House, which had exceptional food, and each room was in itself unique. If you're gonna be staying in Killarney, I highly recommend it. On day three, after a couple of really tough walks up and over dunes on these Lynx courses, we came to a very welcomed change. The pair of Killarney Golf and Fishing Club Parkland Gems, complete with a buggy, or as we say in America, a golf cart. Let me tell you, it was so very needed. Now, Killarney Golf and Fishing Club is an awe-inspiring setting with these big mountains and a lake framing pristine fairways and their well-guarded greens. It's been host to the Irish Open no less than four times, and it's easy when you're there to see why. It's the perfect setting for championship golf. Another great starting hole, it's a little dog leg, short par four right, and that begins just a majestic walk around the lake for much of the front nine. You then turn inward into the countryside, complete with deer and other wildlife, and there isn't a boring hole on this course to be found. Once again, I had a great look at Birdie on the Killeen course. And while Killeen gets top billing, the sister course, Mahoney's Point on the property is no slouch either. Pat and I found it to be every bit as good. And the 18th hole here, a par three, which is delightfully odd, is likely the most picturesque par three we played in all of Ireland. It was such a solid day all around. Day four brought us to another gem, one that I think a lot of people, including Patrick, would consider their favorite course in Ireland, and that is Tralee. Tralee was Arnold Palmer's course. It was, in fact, designed by the king himself. There's even a statue on the first hole in his honor, and it's easy to see why he loved it here so much. The setting is bold. It has the most jaw-dropping views of any course we played. Nearly every hole, if not every one, has a view of the ocean. You can see ruins on this golf course. Rivers run through it. Mountains jut up in the background. There are old farmer's stone walls, fences, pastures, everything that is just pure Ireland, all in one place. I mean, I guess this place is pretty good if you like dramatic oceanside holes. Lynx golf in a foreign country. <laughs> I mean, it's about as dramatic as it gets. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. The collection of par threes at Tralee are probably the best grouping of any in all of Ireland. Each one requires nerve and skill and definitely a little bit of luck. My favorite was the 17th. I hit the perfect shot, a little draw over the ocean. It hit the green, took a bounce towards the hole, and for a second I thought I actually had my Irish ace. Oh. It ended up landing two and a half feet from the hole, but I made just a stupid, stupid decision. Instead of marking my ball and letting everyone finish out, I walked up to it, hit the putt, and yeah, that's golf. Now I think you'll enjoy both the ninth and the 18th hole at Tralee, both reachable par fives that offer a really good look at birdie. I birdied one of the two, but you'll have to wait until that episode to see which one. Oh! 
<laughs> now, as you might have noticed watching the footage from the trip here, we had incredible weather the entire week. I think September might just be the best month for golf in Ireland. And it didn't get any better than our final leg of the journey, the number one course in Ireland, Ballybunion. Spoiler alert, it lives up to the hype. Take all the quirks of Lahinch, the stunning grandeur of Dunebeg and Tralee, and add in the purest conditions that we played all week, and there you go, you've got Bally Bunyan. This was the course that the famous golfer Tom Watson loved more than any other in Ireland, and you can't help but see it too when you're there. From a cemetery-lined first fairway, a foreign routing that often requires you to wait on your drives until the green clears ahead to mesmerizing cliffside drops and dune-filled green complexes this place Never has doubt. it all now tom watson's favorite hole the signature hole at bally bunyan is the 11th it's an oceanside par 4 that requires two really good shots unfortunately i only hit one but still hell of a hole no less <laughs> my favorite hole was the 17th and i think patrick would also agree but not only was it my favorite hole at Bally Bunyan, and not only was it my favorite hole in Ireland, it is the single best golf hole that I have ever played in my life. Now, to be clear, it wasn't the best for score, but it was the best for the soul. It's absolutely perfect. You're standing up on the 17th with this spectacular view of the ocean and the fairway down below that has a little dog leg to the left hiding what is probably the most beautiful green setting on the course. And on this hole, I probably hit the most memorable shot of the whole trip. And it's so memorable to me because it's a shot that I could never cook up in my wildest imagination. The club underneath that lie is gonna be a little, a little dicey. I leaned on my caddy to give me the advice. You guys should go wrong. You can, you can punch it into this, right? You can punch it, bump and run into that, or you can flare, flare it. It was up to me to execute something I had never done in my life, and I pulled it off. Oh boy, I'm glad I listened. I'm glad I listened. Of course, I missed the putt, but. Now 18 is no slouch either. After a relatively flat tee shot, the elevation shifts and it turns into this sweeping uphill fairway that runs parallel to the clubhouse and it terminates on a multi-tiered green atop the bluff. Like I had done the whole trip, I hit a good drive and a great second shot, probably my best shot of the day and I had a really good crack at birdie. It would be the most fitting end to a golf trip in Ireland if I could drain this one. <laughs> so close. Now missing that putt is just so fitting and it's exactly what golf is all about. It keeps you coming back and wanting more and I do want more. The guys at my golf group travel have put together an itinerary very close to what you just saw here with maybe a little bit more sleep built in and you will get to experience the same places I played but we'll be able to do it together. There are 16 spots available. They've created a package that's a very economical price for a bucket list trip like this and I've got a link down below so you can check out all the details. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you'll keep coming back for the following episodes from our Ireland trip. You get a little bit more in depth at each of these properties. Check out that link down below about our trip in 2023 and I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.